Welcome to the TA training series on how to perform the laboratory plasma cutting demonstration. Plasma cutting is a 2D cutting process which uses a high intensity electric arc and pressurized air to cut electrically conductive materials such as aluminum and steel. First, let's cover the rules for personal safety whenever you're using the plasma cutter in our laboratory. For starters, you must have proper footwear and long pants. In addition, you must have proper eye protection. In the case of plasma cutting, you're going to use these darkly tinted glasses, which protect your eyes from the intense arc produced by the plasma cutting process. The glasses are found on the welding cabinet in the back of the welding shop. In addition, you'll wear a welding jacket to protect your upper body from the same arc uh, intensity. And finally, you will wear welding gloves to protect your hands and your skin from the, uh, again, the UV radiation produced by the plasma arc. Next, let's talk about the setup and operation of the plasma cutter. This section is only intended for the TAs as they're the ones who should always be setting up the machine for use in our welding shop. The first step is to turn on the air supply to the machine, which is located on the back wall, and it's this blue valve. You rotate the handle so that the valve is in line with the rest of the air fittings, and you'll see the pressure gauge come up to uh, about 80 PSI. Second, you switch the power, <clears throat> turn the power switch on the back of the machine on, at which point you'll see the machine illuminate and go into its boot mode. Okay. Finally, it's going to display the current setting on the machine. There's a dial which allows us to adjust that setting uh, anywhere from 20 amps up to 65 amps. We usually leave it on the low end of the range for cutting sheet metal. So 20 amps is suitable for 18 or 16 gauge sheet metal and we would increase it up to its maximum of 65 amps for cutting uh, half inch thick material, whether it be steel or aluminum. Okay, so for our demo, we're going to leave it around 20 amps. Next, we need to attach the plasma unit's grounding clamp to our workpiece. The easiest method to accomplish this is simply use the ground clamp to sandwich your workpiece between itself and the welding table, allowing the portion that you want to cut to overhang the welding table. A very easy mistake to make is to forget to double check your cut, that your cut line is free of the welding table and as you're cutting through your work, actually cut into the, the welding table uh, and damage it. Okay, so double check that your cut lines are uh, extended past the edge of the welding table. When we grab the cutting torch off the plasma unit, uh, you'll notice that the body of the torch is plastic, so we want to be careful not to drop it accidentally onto the ground. And to do that, anytime our hands aren't on it, we need to have the torch hanging on either the plasma unit or on the handle on the, uh, the, the TIG welder, as you see. So there's no risk of anybody accidentally tripping over the, uh, the hose, the torch hose, and causing the plastic torch to fall on the, uh, the hard floor and, and break. When using this plasma unit, <clears throat> there's two methods of making cuts. We can begin the cut at the edge of our workpiece and cut through. Uh, cut along our uh, desired path, or we can begin the cut at the, in the middle of our workpiece, which requires us needing to pierce the workpiece to make the cut. Okay? The first method is more common, so that's the one that I'll begin with during this, uh, this TA demonstration. In this case, I have a, uh, a cut line drawn on my workpiece, and it begins at the right-hand corner of my part, so I'm simply going to lower the torch down to the initial location, uh, where it begins on the edge of my part and once I begin the uh, uh, once I strike the arc by pulling the trigger I simply start following the the path just like any other plasma cutting I've ever done in this case we're ready to begin with the demo um, so here we go eyes Okay. Once we finish the cut, as you can hear, the air continues to blow through the torch on the plasma cutter, and this cools down the torch so that the consumables do not overheat, and it usually takes about 15 or 20 seconds for that, uh, that <clears throat> post-flow air to stop. Okay. In this case, we can look at our part, we can look at the, uh, the cut we made, and again, we can see it started at the edge of the part, so I was able to use the edge cutting technique. 
The second method uh, of cutting, which you'll sometimes need to do with the plasma cutter, is to actually pierce the part. Uh, for instance, if you want to cut a circular hole out of the center of a workpiece, perhaps for a ball to fall through in our lab. In this case, the process is to begin with the torch touching or close to touching the workpiece. Maybe one sixteenth of an inch off the, uh, the, the, the part is, uh, is ideal. And you're going to roll the torch head over to about a 30 degree angle. Okay. Now, when I start the, uh, the cutting process, as I begin to see the, uh, the material being eroded by the plasma cutter, I will slowly rock the torch to vertical as it's creating that pierced hole, and then I can commence with the regular cutting like we saw during the, uh, the first part of the demo. Okay. So now I'm going to, uh, to demonstrate in real time. I bring the torch down to the part, touch the part, rotate over to about 30 degrees. I'm going to lift the torch up about 1 16th above the part surface, and now I'm going to begin the cutting. Okay. Eyes. Okay, as you can, can see, I cut a circular hole in the part. Uh, the pierce method prevented uh, excessive erosion of the consumable at the beginning of the process. And at the end, I just had to gently tap the, uh, the part to get it to separate. It's probably smartest to, or wiser just to use a uh, hammer to, uh, to do that. In that case, I must have had a little bit of dross that uh, uh, re-solidified after the cut, which means I probably was not moving the torch quickly enough. The last point worth mentioning is what happens when the operator moves the torch too quickly along the cut path. Um, as the plastic cutter is trying to cut through the material, um, what, essentially what happens is there's not enough time for the arc to cut all the way through the workpiece, so the sparks are blown back up towards the operator. So I'm quickly going to make a cut on the end of this piece of flat bar, and it's, it's purposely going to be at too high of a speed so you can tell the, uh, the difference between the last video, the, the last demo that we just completed. I'll bring the torch into position, call out eyeball, and here we go. Okay. In this instance, we can see with the video, the part did not cut through. Even if I take something, take a clamp and use it as a hammer, it's not close to, break, to cutting all the way through. And clearly you saw all the, uh, the sparks shooting out the sides and even up towards me as I was trying to make that cut. All indicators of um, the fact that I was simply moving the torch way too fast for the current setting on the machine and the thickness of my workpiece. Returning to the actual demonstration that we are giving to the students, we next want to explain to them the plasma cutting process. Okay. The plasma process is very similar to the, to the electric arc welding process in that it uses a power supply inside the plasma cutter to create an electric current uh, which jumps from the tip of the torch to the workpiece and as that arc jumps that air gap, the superheated gas creates what's known as a plasma state. Okay. The current then flows through the workpiece back to the ground clamp and by, by means of the grounding lead back to the plasma unit's power supply. In addition, the plasma cutter has an air supply that blows air right through the center of the arc. So once the plasma, once, once the power supply provides the arc and the heat to produce the molten pool, the air, the pressurized air, blows that molten pool out the bottom of the part, separating the two halves of the pieces that we're trying to cut. For this reason, it should make sense to us that plasma cutting is only permissible on materials that are electrically, that are electrically conductive, like aluminum and steel or copper and brass. Okay? Um, in addition, the plasma cutting head can either be moved manually, like we've demonstrated so far during this demo, and you will demonstrate to the students in the class, or the head can be mounted on a mechanized CNC stage that would allow it to be moved very precisely in a 2D pattern in order to produce much more precise 2D cutting using the plasma cutting process. Okay, so the head itself can work on manual machines like we have, or can be uh, automated by a CNC machine. And finally, we're ready to proceed with the actual plasma cutting demo for the students. In this case, we simply grab a piece of typically sheet metal that we have in the lab. 
we have a trash can full of scraps in the welding shop and we have a, uh, a bin by the sheet metal area that has a bunch of smaller drops that we can use for the demo. It doesn't matter whether it's aluminum or steel for the demo. Uh, next we want to take a sharpie and draw a cut line for us to follow on the part. And then we're going to take the sheet metal and clamp it to the welding table using the ground lead, making sure that our cut line, again, is free of the welding table. Okay, we never want to cut over the table, directly over the table, and risk damaging the expensive welding table. We're going to grab the plasma torch. We're also going to make sure that all the students still have their welding helmets. The helmets are fine for them to wear. If you prefer to give them a pair of the uh, darkly tinted plasma cutting glasses, that's fine as well. But be mindful that the glasses are expensive. They're about $50 a pair. So tell the students to be careful with them as they're handling them so they don't drop them on the, uh, the, the floor. Make sure the curtain is closed. You can see I have my glasses on. I have my welding gloves, welding jacket. Uh, I'm all set to give the demo. I'm going to prepare myself and just do a dry run without cutting just to make sure that I can comfortably move the torch along the path of my cut line. And if I can't, I need to stop and reposition my part. And then when I'm ready, I'm going to give the audible warning to the students, eyes, I'll wait two to three seconds, and then I'll commence with the cutting. So here we go. Eyes. Okay. Once I finish with the cut, I will gently take the torch and just, again, hang it on the, uh, the front of the TIG welding machine so I can talk to the students a little about the process, about what they just saw, and tell them some common applications that we've used the, the plasma cutter for in our laboratory. In closing, we'll cover a little supplementary TA information. As noted on the TA training outline, the plasma cutter is really intended for use by the TAs with the students. Okay, the students should not be left alone to operate the plasma cutter just because they don't have the experience typically to do so uh, without damaging the consumables or the welding table. So make sure that you work closely with the students when they need to use the plasma cutter in the lab. Second, when using the plasma cutter, regardless of what you're cutting, as you're making the cut, always remember to gently slide the torch across the surface of the workpiece. If you push too hard on it, it's going to create excessive drag and cause your cut to be much less fluid and much jerkier and ragged. Okay. Along the same lines, there are some accessories that we have for use with the plasma cutter uh, for cutting straight lines. In this case, it's simply a piece of half inch flat bar. There's nothing special about it. We would draw a line on our workpiece. We would clamp the flat bar to the welding, uh, to the welding table. In this case, I'll do it real quick just to demonstrate. We'll use our hand and our eyes to make sure that our cut is off the work table, the, uh, the welding table, and it is. And I'll go ahead and make a straight cut using this straight edge. So here we go. Eyeball. Once I set the torch down and I remove the straight edge, you can see that it actually gives me a uh, cut that is quite straight, much straighter than I could cut by hand. In addition, we have an accessory box uh, with a uh, essentially a, a compass for use cutting circular features. The way it works, it has a magnet built into the base that you just position on your workpiece. And then it has, again, something that looks like a compass, a little pin that slides into the magnet. You can adjust the radius of the hole that you wish to, uh, to cut. Usually, you'd have an arc uh, drawn on your workpiece. And then the end of this guide is the right size to hold the torch. So that torch will now allow the operator to cut out a perfect circle, or at least to very closely follow an arc on the workpiece. So between the straight cutting edge and the circle template, you can actually produce cuts that are, uh, are quite accurate uh, for a manually operated plasma cutting torch. Like with welding, the best way to improve your proficiency when plasma cutting is through practice. So come in and grab some material out of the scrap trash can in the welding shop or the drop bins in the sheet metal station. Lay out some line work, make sure it's clear of the table, and do some cutting. Use our templates 
and you'll see that after uh, a short period, you'll be able to produce uh, quite high quality cuts using the plasma cutter manually. In doing so, however, there is one important caution related to equipment safety. Don't ever dry fire the torch, and what that means is just hold the torch and pull the trigger so you can see the starter arc. Don't ever do that uh, unless you're cutting a piece of material because doing so dramatically shortens the life of the consumables in the tip of the torch.